everybody, it's Jane from Norman S. Wright. Last week I covered the different types of chiller compressors. There's one more chiller I want to cover and that's absorption chillers. So let's get started. An absorption chiller is a type of chiller that doesn't use a compressor to produce cooling like we discussed last week. An absorption chiller relies on a heat source to generate the cooling. They are often exhaust fired using recovered thermal energy as that heat source. Absorption chillers contain two main fluids, a refrigerant and an absorbent. These two fluids work together to produce cooling. Let's make a little room here. So for space conditioning or other requirements that require chilling fluid temperatures of 40 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, water lithium bromide is the most common solution. With water and lithium bromide, water is the refrigerant and lithium bromide is the absorbent. For lower temperatures, ammonia and water are typically used where ammonia is the refrigerant and water is the absorbent. Lithium bromide is a salt in liquid form that is attracted to water. If you spray lithium bromide into water vapor, it'll combine with the water molecules. But when heat is added, they separate and the lithium bromide particles, because they're heavier, will fall down and the water vapor rises. Let's move this over again. Now let's bring up part of the picture from a couple videos back that shows the basic chiller components. In an absorption chiller, the compressor and its prime mover, the motor, are replaced by a thermal compressor system consisting of an absorber, a pump, and a generator. Let me move this up in the corner so we can keep it on the screen as I talk about this. Just like the compressor in the chillers I discussed the last couple of weeks, the thermal compressor takes low pressure, low temperature refrigerant vapor from the evaporator and delivers high pressure, high temperature refrigerant vapor to the condenser. So I'm gonna try to use the same colors as I used in the image before. So down here, we'll have the absorber, the pump, and the generator. And those replace the compressor that is in the image on the top left. Now we'll put in the condenser and the evaporator. So although I drew them in a different orientation than they are in the drawing in the top left, they go to the same place. So the condenser will go to the cooling tower and the evaporator has a loop that goes to the chilled water that supplies the air handlers. And then let's draw in the expansion valve. So just like before, refrigerant will flow from the condenser to the expansion valve to the evaporator. Now let's go and look at this thermal compressor. Inside the absorber is lithium bromide and water. Because the lithium bromide is attracted to the water, they form a dilute solution. This solution is easily pumped through the pump to the generator. In the generator, the refrigerant is boiled using thermal energy. The heat separates the lithium bromide and water. The water vapor leaves the generator and goes to the condenser. The lithium bromide is sent back down to the absorber to start that process over again. The loop between the condenser, the expansion valve, and the evaporator are the same as before, but from the evaporator, the water is sprayed into the absorber to start the process again with the lithium bromide that's in the absorber. The absorption process is exothermic, meaning it generates heat. This heat must be rejected from the absorber to the condenser water and cooling tower loop. Because of this additional heat reject load, absorption chillers require a larger cooling tower compared to a mechanical chiller with the same capacity. Let's make a little room and bring everything back on screen. Absorption chillers are most cost effective at sites that have significant space conditioning requirements or year-round loads. Applications with year-round conditioning loads could be hospitals, hotels, and large commercial office buildings. Absorption chillers are also good for applications that have waste energy already, like petroleum or chemical plants, or other applications that have processes that generate extra heat. 
So that's a basic overview of absorption chillers. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and thanks for watching.